Hey there! Welcome to Life Noggin. Did you know you could be a chimera and not even know it? I don't mean a fire-breathing lion-goat-snake hybrid. That's just a mythical creature, unfortunately, and I'm pretty sure you'd notice if you had the body parts of other animals sticking out from your back. You should probably turn around and check, though, right? I really mean someone comprised of at least two genetical distinct sets of cells, which means their bodies contain at least two different sets of DNA. A chimera's cell populations come from multiple zygotes, which are fertilized eggs. This can naturally happen in a few different ways. For instance, while a fetus is in the womb, cells can travel across the placenta. This can lead to the fetus absorbing a few of its parent cells or its parent absorbing some of its cells. This is known as microchimerism. Then there is twin chimerism, which happens after fraternal twins are conceived but one embryo dies in the womb. The surviving embryo could absorb some of the cells from the deceased embryo if their placentas are attached. These cells are most often found in the bloodstream. Finally, there is fusion or tetragametic chimerism. This can also happen with the deceased fraternal twin embryo, but in this case, the two zygotes fuse together, forming one embryo. Individuals with this type of chimerism will have tissues made up of cells from one or both zygotes, which means that you could be your own twin. In rare instances, people with tetragametic chimerism may have patches of different colored skin, have two different colored eyes, or have both male and female genitalia, while those with microchimerism may have autoimmune issues. But most often, these individuals don't have any symptoms and can live their whole lives without knowing it. Scientists don't know how many people have natural chimerism, but some theorize it could be up to 10% of the population, though chimerism can occur artificially as well. A recipient of a transfusion or transplant can absorb some of their donor's cells, which is a form of microchimerism. This can happen even if the donor isn't human. Xenotransplantation is when organs, cells, or tissues are transplanted or infused across different species. Scientists have been experimenting in this field for over a century, and they believe the potential benefits are considerable, especially as the demand for transplants continues to exceed the supply. Xenotransplantations of animal organs and cells into human patients with life-threatening conditions began in the 1960s. These most often come from pigs, and nowadays are genetically modified to avoid rejection by the patient. But even so, pig cells contain porcine endogenous retroviruses in their genome. These and other viruses from the host could infect human cells. Since we know chimerism occurs during translation, developing methods to detect infection rather than chimerism is one of the many things scientists are working on to make xenotransplantation safer and more effective. And they're already seeing some results of their efforts. In just the last couple of years, the first patient to receive a pig heart and the first to receive a pig kidney both lived for two months after implantation. Which might not seem like a lot, but it is a huge step in this kind of thing. Question for you, if you could clone yourself, what would be the first thing that you'd do? Let me know in the comment section below or tell me what should we talk about next. Wanna watch more Life Noggin? Click here or click on this one to watch a mystery video that YouTube is gonna recommend. As always, my name is Blocko. This has been Life Noggin. Don't forget to keep on thinking.